What have you heard about Tesla? That he invented alternating current, AC, and electrified our world? That he and Edison had the war of the currents between AC and DC? That Edison hounded Tesla for the rest of his life? That he wanted to give everyone free electricity? That he was a physics genius? That's what I heard on YouTube and websites and even TV shows and video games. But I researched it by reading primary materials and ready to have your mind blown? They're all wrong. All of them. Ready to learn the real story? Let's go. Electricity, 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 electricity. What are the facts commonly told about Tesla? Tesla invented AC and created our electrical world. AC was invented and utilized way before Tesla. In fact, the first AC generator was invented in 1832 when a French tinkerer named Hippotli Pixie created a machine that spun a magnet near coils of wire. Pixie was inspired by Michael Faraday's paper from the previous year that stated that changing a magnetic field will induce a current in a coil. In Pixie's machine, as the magnet spun towards and away from the coils, it created alternating current or AC. Pixie, however, used brushes to force the current to always go in one direction, or pulse DC. Over the years, the generators got more complicated, and according to a 19th century electricity book, in 1856, after frustration with some faulty brushes, a large generator was used without brushes and it was found that electric lights could be lit with alternating current. Tesla was born that very year, so it seems very unlikely that he had anything to do with it. For many years afterward, AC was often used to power bright outdoor arc lamps, although dynamos with pulse DC were considered better for incandescent lamps. The big change in electricity came in the 1880s with transformers. Transformers could transform AC current into high voltage, low current waves that could travel long distances without losing much energy to heat and then transform back to low voltage, high current to be used in the home. A trio of Hungarian engineers whose initials are ZBD patented what is now called the ZBT transformer in 1885. George Westinghouse became convinced that AC was the future for incandescent lights after reading about the transformer. Westinghouse's assistant, William Stanley, patented a simpler and more useful transformer in 1886. That same year, Westinghouse and Stanley created the, quote, first practical system for providing electrical illumination using alternating current with transformers. Now we finally get to Nikola Tesla, sort of. See, one of the biggest handicaps to the AC system is they didn't have a way to make a true AC motor. How do you get something to spin in a circle when the current goes back and forth? In 1885, an Italian named Galileo Ferraris solved this problem by building an AC generator with two separate coils, which produced two separate AC currents at different peak times. Ferraris found that these two AC currents could push a cylinder in a circle. This was the first true polyphase or multiple phase AC current and motor. However, the motor didn't work efficiently at all, and he didn't publish his findings until 1888. Meanwhile, independent of Ferraris, Tesla had a similar idea, but with a more powerful and practical motor, which he patented in 1887. Although polyphase AC was eventually appreciated for its efficiency, which is why we now use three-phase current. At the time, people were mostly interested in the motor. In 1888, George Westinghouse bought Tesla's patent because, according to Westinghouse, his company needed to control the alternating motor business. Although there's much debate about whether Tesla first invented polyphase current or Ferraris did, at the time, Tesla admitted that it, they had the same idea. Quote, Professor Ferraris not only came independently to the same theoretical results, but in a manner identical, almost to the smallest detail. So wait, if Tesla didn't invent AC and didn't independently invent AC polyphase current, and Westinghouse was already implementing AC for his lighting systems 
two years before he got Tesla's patent. Why was the war of the currents between Edison and Tesla? That brings us to fact number two. The war of the currents was a battle over AC versus DC between Edison and Tesla. Edison's real rival was Westinghouse and Tesla was just a minor player. In 1880, Thomas Edison got a patent for the light bulb and was having great success with his company, Edison's General Electric, which used dynamos and pulsed DC current. In 1886, George Westinghouse started using AC and transformers to light up buildings. Edison hated Westinghouse and AC because he thought the high voltage alternating current was dangerous writing a private note that, quote, just as certain as death, Westinghouse will kill a customer within six months. Edison then wrote a public manifesto about the dangers of AC, where he mentioned Westinghouse 24 times and Tesla zero. Edison then let a man named Harold Brown use his space to conduct gruesome public experiments, killing dogs and horses with AC to promote how dangerous it was, as well as promoting the use of AC in the electric chair. Edison even wanted death by electric chair to be known as Westinghouse. AC did become cheaper and more powerful in 1888, when Westinghouse bought Tesla's patent for polyphase generator and motor. But it wasn't a pivotal moment in the war. What was pivotal was when J.P. Morgan, who was a major stockholder of the Edison company, got sick of all the money wasted in lawsuits and wanted to use the cheaper and more powerful AC. So in 1892, he orchestrated a coup, fired Edison from his own company, and even removed Edison's name from it, leaving plain old GE or General Electric. However, an Edison versus Westinghouse rivalry doesn't fit the narrative of a corporate Goliath versus the individual brilliant David. So it's been remade into a rivalry between Edison and Tesla, where Westinghouse is just erased from history. So if Edison didn't battle Tesla in the war over AC and DC, why did he harass him and thwart all of his efforts? This brings us to fact number three. Edison hounded Tesla, starting when Tesla worked for Edison. Not true according to Tesla. It's true that Tesla did work for Edison briefly in 1884. And according to his biography, when Tesla worked for the New York branch of the Edison company, the local manager offered him $50,000 if he completed a task, but then said it was a joke and Tesla resigned in protest. This local manager was not Edison, but it was changed into Edison as the origin story of their rivalry. On the previous page, Tesla wrote how honored he was to meet Edison. He wrote that Edison was a quote, wonderful man who without early advantages in scientific training had accomplished so much and made him wonder if his formal education meant that, quote, most of my life had been squandered. He wrote his nice words about Edison in the same book where he described the people who thwarted his efforts to build an all earth transmission tower as, quote, nothing more than the microbes of a nasty disease. So it doesn't sound like Tesla felt like Edison was responsible for his hardship, although he was clearly distressed about the loss of his tower. Why was Tesla's tower destroyed? This leads us to the next fact about it. Tesla wanted to create free electricity and was stopped by money hungry corporations. Tesla never had anything to do with free electricity and he was stopped because his methods didn't work and Marconi's did. See, in 1891, he invented the Tesla coil and took the world by storm with his amazing demonstrations of lighting bulbs with one line then lighting fluorescence in his bare hand. Tesla became convinced that he could use his machine to electrify the whole earth so that he could input energy in one spot and remove it anywhere else in the world. This was a different way to transmit energy through the earth instead of through wires. But he never said anything about free energy or energy from nothing. It was supposed to be cheaper because the copper in the wires was so expensive. Not because Tesla was tapping into some mystical source of Mayan energy the government doesn't want you to know about. In 1901, Tesla convinced J.P. Morgan, the same guy who screwed over Edison nine years earlier, to give him $150,000 so he could build his all-Earth transmission tower. Meanwhile, the inventions in the Tesla coil were quite useful for sending long-distance wireless telegraph signals. 
In 1901, Guglielmo Marconi said he got a wireless telegraph to go across the Atlantic. Tesla was unconcerned as he was doing much grander work, electrifying the earth. And also he knew that Marconi was using several of his patents. However, in 1904, Marconi got the patent office to reverse its decision and awarded Marconi the rights to his transmitter and receiver. Around that time, J.P. Morgan became irritated with Tesla, his money pit of a tower, and stopped funding him. Tesla failed to get other people to fund him because more and more people started to notice that his ideas were, well, nonsense. To quote from an article from 1903, Tesla's lectures abounded in fallacies and absurdities, but that spectacular sensationalism was accepted as a substitute for scientific methods. Which brings us to fact number five. Tesla was a physics genius. This was the most surprising to me. Tesla was an electrical genius with great intuition on how to build amazing electrical devices. However, his physics was bad, like demonstrably horrible. He didn't believe in electrons. He thought relativity was pseudoscience. And astonishingly, considering his interest and influence on wireless, he never believed that Hertz's radio was electromagnetic vibrations in the air. The best way to demonstrate Tesla's tortured relationship with physics is an article he wrote in 1900. This article contains some iconic pictures, but in 36 pages only includes one equation, one half mv squared, where the velocity v is a certain hypothetical velocity, which we are unable exactly to define and determine. And m is the mass of mankind, that can be increased, quote, by promotion of marriage, by conscientious attention to the children, and by the observance of all the many precepts and laws of religion and hygiene. See what I mean? This article wasn't written at the end of his life when he was in love with a pigeon. Don't ask. This was written at the height of his powers and was actually the article that convinced J.P. Morgan to give him the money to fund the tower in the first place. Conclusion. When I started to research the history of electricity, I expected Tesla to be a major part of it. His devices are so beautiful, and far and away, his name seems to be the most closely connected to the word electricity. However, I found most of my knowledge came from a complete misunderstanding of his life and ideas. Nonetheless, we shouldn't discount that Tesla was a wizard of electricity and his devices are still, over 100 years later, things of beauty and wonder. Tesla's devices are a gateway drug for many electrical engineers, and that is not a small thing. Electricity, 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 electricity. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Also, join if you want to see more videos about the history of the real people who discovered electricity. Okay, have a good day.